A wicked stab, where'd you get it? Where can I get that stab? Where'd you sample it from? I made it. It's real easy. You can do it for free in like any DAW or a couple tools. I'll just, we'll just go through this. I'll show you how it's done. Um, cut, transition. All right. So you'd be able to do this in pretty much anything. Um, we're going to start with a synth. We need a synth of some kind. Um, we're going to use synth one because synth one is my favorite synth of all time. I use it in just about everything I do. And it, it works really well for what we're about to do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to like... <laughs> We're gonna not use the default patch. We're gonna just make an init patch of some kind. I don't know why I have like a pa don't have a patch with like just a saw or something, but we're gonna do that quick. So let's uh, set it to oscillator one. Let's send both saws. Um, we're gonna set the sub oscillator like I don't know fifty. Set it to a saw. Turn this off. Turn this off. Turn this off. Turn this off. None of this other stuff really matters. We're gonna set this filter to LPDL. Turn the resonance up a little bit. Crank this up. Crank this up. Uh, crank the sustain up. Uh, saturation a little bit. Okay, what do we got? Sounds really good. <laughs> All right, so next we are going to use unison. We're gonna set it to eight. We're gonna set our poly to 32, so we can do a lot of notes. We're gonna really detune this. Okay, now we're gonna spread it apart. We're getting there, but this, this, trust me, there's a lot more to this. Um, now it's up to you whether or not you wanna do a detune step in this first part. Um, it can get a little hairy on the lower notes just because that's where your bass is. We're probably going to be mono summing the bass on this uh, sound, but it's all up to you. I think having a good solid foundation like this is a great start. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to decide like how far we want it to span. I think spanning four octaves for this first part is a good call. And we don't want any chords or anything yet. We just want to render this and no other sound. Okay, so let's call this uh, S1. So we're just rendering this now. Um, so that's done. Great. That's our first step. Next step, we're probably going to knock this part out with the lowest note because we're going to be introducing a lot of like harmonics now. And that doesn't play so well in the lower registers. So we can get rid of that and we can open up synth one again. And we can start thinking about our higher registers where all of our like messy harmonics are, where our real like big fat whatever is. Um, so let's bring in our second oscillator, tune it up an octave. And on the pitch of the unison, let's bring that up an octave as well. Oops, come on. Okay, so now we're gonna render this. Something like that. Um, so let's give this a render. Let's call it S2. Now here's where things get really kind of boring. Um, we're going to make very slight adjustments to this, like a little less detune, a little more unison detune maybe, um, a little less fine detune on the second oscillator there. Um, so it's going to be like really similar, but not quite the same, maybe more saturation. Um, you know, things like that. Maybe chorus to just really blow it out in the stereo field. So it's almost the same. We're going to render this now. So if you've been counting, um, if you want to count unison as oscillators, we are already up to um, 8 times 4, uh, 32 times 3. We're already up to 96 oscillators of... So let's add more. Um... So we're going to work up to like the higher registers now, pro probably. And this is where we can do, start doing some interesting things. Um, let's really saturate this. And maybe we want to switch to a square here. Okay, so now on the higher registers here... We're going to pitch all this up one more octave. This is going to be pretty high pitched, just so you know. Now, what I like to do is on this highest one, instead of playing that C way up there, I like to pop down to the, the fifth below it. Now, you don't hear it as much in the stab itself. It almost comes across as kind of like a sparkly harmonic up there from the rest of it. Um, so don't worry if it sounds like it's not the same note as the rest. 
And trust me, we'll be getting to like putting other notes in this. That's where it gets really exciting. So we can probably call this part mostly done. It's the it's the most boring part of the bunch. So now what we're going to do is cut transition. All right. So we are now in our DAW. I am using Acid Pro 7.0. I don't recommend that. Whatever DAW you use, you'll be able to do this. Probably, I would hope so. Um, so we've got our files here of our big stinky synth, and we're just gonna drop them all in here. Just all like this. It's already starting to sound like something, ain't it? But we aren't quite there yet. So first things first, let's turn down our master just so it doesn't give us like an absolutely smashing headache. So pretty cool sound. Um, now what we can do from here, I'm just going to like loop it so I can hear what I'm doing. Um, I'm also going to give this a quick save. Um, so on our master, we don't do this on the tracks themselves. We do this on our master. We're going to drop in an EQ of some kind. Um, whichever one you like to use is great. Your DAW's built-in equalizer will probably get the job done. Um, I'm going to use Equilibre, which is a CPU hog but it lets me take a look at like what's actually happening and it's free and it's nice. All right, so let's uh, turn on the graph. All right, so we get to choose like which harmonics we're gonna accent here, which ones we aren't gonna accent. So let's play with this a bit. Let's, let's sculpt this sound to make it glue together a little bit. So let's compare it with a bypass. So it's starting to sound more like a slightly different thing now, which is good. That's fantastic. Um, we can make it sound even more like another thing by like, we'll, we'll grab one of our tracks, let's say this one, and let's duplicate it and make it play back twice as fast. Now we're gonna do have to do some shenanigans here to extend it. So I'm just gonna copy it and like have it fade like this. So we're kind of building up a certain part of the sound by doing that. Um, so these two here, S2 and S3, those are really similar. S3 is a little louder, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock those out to the left and right. Pretty cool. And I'm going to grab one of them and duplicate it, put it in another track. And we're going to pitch this one up, let's say an octave. We're going to do that trick again, where we kind of like extend it cheaply. You don't really hear this, and you probably aren't going to be playing this whole sound anyways. Okay, it's starting to sound pretty good. Um, let's grab this one here. We'll duplicate that, set it to the center. Now on this one, we're actually going to have do an EQ on that one track just to knock out the low end. So we're only getting, and let's emphasize those mids. Cool. And let's do this. So we're just pitching it up. Here we're doing the, uh, the minor third. We're getting there. We're getting somewhere with this big stinky chord. Um, we can do. We can grab this one again and do the same thing up to the fifth. Usually, when you're doing the third and the fifth like that, you'll want the you'll want the fifth. Oh, sorry, the third to be on the next octave up. So let's do that. Let's take our third, pitch it up an octave. This one's getting real short now which is kind of a pain in the ass, but not a huge deal, because we can do this dumb trick pretty much forever. It's a, it's a pretty big sound. Pretty friggin' big. All right. 
So let's go over to our master again. Um, so next we'll want to put, or we, we could stop there because it sounds pretty good. Um, I like to put a clipper on the master. Um, personally, my favorite is called K-Clip by Kazrog, but it's paid and we're doing this for free. So let's try G-Clip. Uh, so we want a soft clip. That's important, okay? That's very important. And let's turn down our gain going into Equilibre. And let's play with the clip in here. We, I like to cut off just a little bit and get some kind of like, it has a kind of like, you know, sample taken from somewhere else quality when you clip it just a little bit. Sounds pretty good. I feel like I want to make this part louder. And I also feel like I just want that part to be the bass frequencies. Like there's a lot going on kind of in that muddy area that I don't like. So let's just knock all these mostly out. Well, that's a good sound. <laughs> so the bass frequencies are going to like clip the rest of it, which I think is also a fantastic sound. That's a big, stinky stab, if I ever heard one. Now, there are a few other things you can do to, like, really exaggerate and uh, play with different, like, aspects of this. Um, let me go to... Let me see which part I want to do this to. Let's do it to this part. Um, you could drop something on, like, um, what's it called? Chorus Ensemble. This is a free plugin by Air Windows. So by doing this different parts of the sound, you're accenting certain frequencies more than others. You're getting a lot of like interplay between the sounds going on, and that's really exciting. It, it really helps tell the fact that it's coming from something else rather than just like something you've made. Um, it sounds like a, like a pre-produced piece of music almost. Like if you just listen to a clip of that, it almost sounds like a little blip of an orchestra or something just because of all, all the shit going on. Um, so now we just render it. We can render this as, um, I have chosen the name as, 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 <laughs> um, and now I'm going to go back into open MPT. This is, uh, just where I sequence most of my music. Um, and I'm going to drop it in, not as an instrument. Sorry. Hold on. I'll, I'll get it right this time. And I'll make an envelope for it, just a little volume envelope. Now, just about every DAW has a, has a way to handle samples like this. Like there's the fruity sampler. Um, I'm sure Ableton has something. I don't know. I've never used the fucking program. <laughs> I mean, I have, but just enough to know that I hate it. Um, all right, get down here, you. There we go. Now, some of my favorite things to do with this in post, when you're actually using it, um, in a tracker especially, I like to reduce the sample rate. Um, I also like to reduce it down to a small piece of it, like... So let's reduce the sample rate here, like, pretty low. Let's say, like, yeah, a bunch of twos. You know, not low enough, actually. Let's do, like, 18,500. There we go. And let's crossfade it. And let's set it to 8-bit. Nice and crunchy, just the way I like it. Um, you could also, this is something I do on like most of them, um, make it mono, which sounds like, a, is it? Yeah, Shift M. Which sounds counterintuitive because we just did all that stuff, but the whole like collapse to mono is a really particular sound that is just unique to stabs and then we can blow the sample way out not that much that's a lot 
and it still sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm going to drop Tal Reverb on it. This is free and it's pretty good. Um, there you go. Stabs. And you can use any, like absolutely any organization of chords or notes you want. Typically, keep your lower notes further apart. So like your low notes should be like an octave apart. And then from there, you can do like maybe fifths apart. And then you can do your, in your higher octaves, your harmonies and things like that. Yeah, that's that. Um, if you have IL Harmer or Image Line Harmer, um, I used Harmer a lot on Monarch of Death Rave in, with, you, through, with this exact process. So not that folder, this one. So I would drop in my chord into Harmer. Um, it has a very particular way of doing the like, image synthesis, which is like, it's got this funky grainy quality to it that, that I kind of dig. Um, and I would use the internal effects usually and use the burning compression setting. It's got a really particular sound that I became quite fond of working with it. Um, along with uh, some portamento. Cut transition. So that's it. Cool. Neat. That's how you do it. I hope you have fun making some big, stinky, smelly rave stabs. That's it. Take care. Have a good one. Stay safe. And uh, yeah, I'm um, trying to do the heart thing. Oh, fuck this hand tracking.